Hi, welcome to AI Late to Class. Got the WAN 2.2 Fun Impact and Control models working today. Had to adjust the workflows for the GGUF versions for low VRAM GPUs. Uh, so let's look at what we're doing here. Uh, this first one is Impaint. So have this house and then I impaint the fire on it. And then when we run it, we basically get this burning down house here. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then on the other one, we'll have a look at the pose control. So we have our character here. And then over here, we've got a pose that we're going to use. And once we've got our pose, we can then get our character doing the same thing. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, after that, I'm going to show how we can export them if we want to remove the background and just have an alpha channel. Or we could have a mask channel so that we can get it into After Effects. So I'll show you how we do that and then we can put whatever background we want and then we can move our characters in After Effects. So some of these things are what I'm going to cover and a little bit more in today's video. So keep watching. Right, in Comp UI now, if you haven't got Comp UI installed, go to my other video about installing Comp UI. But if you have, then we're ready to go, right? So let's just have a look at this. We've just got our first uh, image and then our second image. Uh, what's different between my other video and first frame, last frame? Well, uh, that wasn't a model. That was just a node that did that. Um, and we have had the WAN 2.1 first frame, last frame model. Um, so this is sort of different than that as well. So those things are more transitional. So if you had, like in my other video, I had a dog and then I had a human face on the second photo, that'll sort of morph the two. Um, or any sort of scene, it just sort of morphs scene by scene, um, just like a transition in when you're using some sort of video application between two frames, whereas this way is a little bit different. It sort of makes one think about what to do by the prompt in between those two frames. So in this case, I've got a flames there, and my prompt will be make house burn in flames sort of thing. And so... It'll think about that and it'll make that rather than fade on the flames and that. So it is really good. Um, I've had to pull this workflow to bits and I've put the GGUFs in this. So this is the native workflow. I haven't really talked about the one wrapper um, before, what the difference between that and the native is. But the WAN wrapper, you know, it supports GGUF now on some things, but it isn't supporting it in the WAN 2.2 video models yet. It might do that tomorrow. I don't know when it'll do it, but for now, I have to use the native workflow. I actually like the native workflow more so than the wrapper. I've just seemed to be able to get things working easier. So in this case, I mean, if you want to use the FP8 models, I've got them in behind here as well. So, but for my machine and for other people with low VRAM, I've started off with the Q4 um, quant models and I, I've still got room to move so I can probably go up higher models than that and I can see the sort of the lower quality with these models but it's alright, I just started testing it with that and I'll probably shift them up further. That's a good thing about these quant models is you can just grab them and then go up further as you can see what your computer can handle. So. This is just going in normal, like the normal one, 2.2, all of the same things. Uh, the difference is we have a first image and start image that goes into this one bun in paint to video node. So this is what's doing all of the work here. Then it sends it over there and puts it out. So this is a really good uh, workflow. Uh, so the, the way of explaining that versus first frame, last frame, is when you had, if you back in the uh, early days when you had uh, Macromedia or Adobe Flash, you'd have what's called motion tweening, and that tweens the images between the two, so whereas this is actually creating the video between the two. So um, I'll show some clips on the results that I've got from each video. This is my crystal ball one. I actually did this on the Q2, so this is only like a 5 gigabyte file or two five gigabyte files because of the high noise and low noise but anyway let's just have a look over at the prompt I did with that one 
and a skull slowly appears in the crystal ball. So that um, did even better with that turn to it. This is the sample that comes with the original workflow. Thought I'd try it because it looks really cool and it came out really good. So yeah, I'm not going to go through the prompt. That's with the original workflow. Then wanted to see if I could blow up a road and it did pretty good at that. Have a tree grow some leaves. Then got this guy with metal bits breaking off his face. This was a little bit more difficult in the prompt, but it came out good in the end. Um, so if I go back over here, you can see that. Small chunks of metal breaking off the character's face and spinning into the air, so that did quite well. Lastly, I've got this blood pouring into the sink. This came out really good. It's a lot better than first frame, last frame, because that just would just fade in. So this is, if you know what your end result wants to be, let's say you had a ship, spaceship or something, and you wanted a certain type of ladder coming down from it, um, if you rely on one to do what you want in your head, it's not going to do it. So if you make the image first, this is where you'd use something like this, is if you've got in your head what you want, so you can make that and like I'm using flux context to make my first and then I'm using flux context again to edit that image keeping all things the same like I did in my last video and just making a slight adjustment so unlike this one I've kept the same image keep the same seed and then I just add blood to it and that's how we get this shot so once you've got that then you can talk to it and say what you want it to do the in-between is really good result here and i haven't even got sage attention uh running on this yet and it's about three minutes of generation so i could probably get that down a few more seconds um and i'll give that a go later on i might have that in the comments that workflow a flux context edit toolbox so i just uploaded the sync there and then in here it said human Blood pouring out one of the taps and on the sink make the blood a dark red colour and watery. The reason I had to be a little bit more descriptive there because of the sensor of the model where it doesn't sort of want to put blood in that in there so you sort of have to trick it into things. Right so where do we get these models here for the high noise GGUF and the low noise GGUF? Go over here to Quantstack. Um, he's got a few of them here, he's got the control camera, fun control which I'll show next and the fun in-paint which I'm using now. So we click into this fun in-paint, click on files and versions and you'll see a high noise and low noise folder um, and these are all your different sizes. So that scale one I did in was the Q2 but I'm currently using this uh, for um, Q1. And if I go back here, my low noise, and you pick the same of that one, whatever you're going to choose, obviously. If you're not going to use these GGUF and you want to use an FP8, you go to the obvious guy, the Kaijai guy who's got everything on here, um, and you'll see that in the list. And also you need from here, if you haven't already got it, like if you're looking in here and you need these LORAs, these speed up LORAs, the high noise and low noise one make sure you get the right one so if you go into kaijai he's got them there under the one two two lightning um so you get the i 2 v uh high and low there um that's his versions of them and i'll put another version in the comments that's double that size that i'm using and but sometimes you can get confused between that and the Light X2V because you can see that written. It is the same company, so some people label them that and you can get confused. You can use these too, but those other ones are specific to the one 2.2. These ones are all round, if so if you're using them with other things such as Flux and that. So it's probably best to use the specific one ones. They will all work, but there's different sizes, different ranks there too. Um, and I use them on some other workflows, but not for this one one. So just pay attention to that sort of stuff. On Confi I, where I got the workflows from and changed them to GGUF, uh, there is a video here and it shows you a lot of things to do with the fun control, the in painting, and the fun camera and what you can do 
it's a long video, but it's worth watching. You get a lot of ideas from that. Um, and people on Discord showing what they've done with it. And you can check out their links as well. And so, yeah, definitely worth having a look at. In the one 2.2 fun control workflow now. So this is where you put your image in and then you transfer those movements to another character. I had to change this workflow from the original of the confui.org website because it was using Canny. Um, I don't know why they were doing that uh, because I don't want to transfer the lines. I want the skeleton movement of a character transferred. So I put in this Uni Animate DW Pose Detector and that worked quite well. So we'll just have a look at some of the other samples that I got through. Yeah, this one's come out quite good. Just woman walking towards the screen. As you can see, the hand movement, everything is coming out pretty good. Um, I think this is looking better than Vase right now. Uh, we'll soon see when the new Vase 1 2.2 gets released. Thought I'd try a cartoon to see if that's any good, and it came out quite good. Only problem I'd say here is that dress... In the input pose is causing issues like for the arms it seems to be making the arms longer length to justify that when she holds the dress up so at least I've learned what sort of input um, motion to put in uh, so it doesn't make a mess of my output but the cartoon I guess so I'm going to try a few more things with this and I reckon I could get some good stuff out of this certainly has potential here this one, the background came out a bit weird. Uh, the door sort of doesn't look right as it's moving forward. She looks okay. She's coming through sort of like the original, although the original is on an angle. The walking's on an angle, but it's kept the pose motion quite good. Uh, this one, I'm going to remove the background there so that I can put her into a different scene. And I'll show you how we can do alpha channel and we can do it with a mask. Uh, and put it into After Effects. So for the alpha channel, just trying to remove the character from a background, we do it last. I've made this workflow added to it. Um, I'll have this download in the comments. So all I've added to it was the SAM2 segmentation. I'll have another video on this soon, but anyway, this one at the moment, I've just got alpha channel in here, and I've typed in what I want to remove. In this case, it's the woman from the video. I want to cut her off the background. And important bit over here is where it's going, right? So I've written the folder called dog2 and put a number there. It doesn't really matter what number. It'll just continue it through. And when that comes out, it'll produce a whole lot of the images separately, PNG sequence. And they've all got no backgrounds on them. So once we go then into After Effects, um, or if you've got DaVinci Resolve, something like that, um, we can come in here and we can bring that, make sure we click PNG Sequence and that'll import it all in. And from there we can just drag it down to our timeline. Right, click that, bring that down there. Uh, she looks a bit odd there against the house. We can transform that in the background. Um, make it fit to comp still she now she's way too big but you get it um the reason why we would use masks and not just this alpha channel sometimes we want to get you can see there's a little bit of its sharp edges on the background if we have the mask we can then blur the mask a little bit we can grow shrink it just so that we get the desired look what we want so i'll do that next on this workflow here i've got different movement but apart from that i've added in this mask enhancer so if you look up here i now have color clicked there not alpha so if you click that down you'll see the alpha this time it's on color and i've got this coming down to this mask enhancer um, i've already got this thing here that's imported in as a white background because that's what we need. So make sure that's there. I will have this in the comments, this workflow anyway, so you can look at it, but just so you know what's going on. And now the mask is getting imported to its own image, right? So we have the image getting uh, separated out to um, multiple images at the top. And then we have the mask behind it also getting separated out. Make sure that you have the mask and the other image in two separate folders. At the top I've got dog3 written there. And the mask one will go to this face, fs. You can name them what you like. But just make sure they go to two different folders. 
If we look over here, you can see all of the masks that have gone into that folder. If we go up, we can see all of the ones that have gone into the dog three folder. So we'll then bring those into After Effects. If we come in over here, you can see the two over here, the mask and that. So we'll drag the top one down there, put that on top of our image. And then we have to bring our mask on top of that. And we will click on the actual image, not the mask. We'll click on the image, come up here to Layer, go to Track Mat, and we want to go to the layer above and clip luma mat and therefore we've got our image on top of that we still see these edges here so this is where we can do our um, effect to try and change that we can go in two places here but let's just go up to effect and we go to blur sharpen we'll go to gaussian blur at the moment doesn't do anything right so i can adjust that there can put that on there see if that gives me a bit more blur uh, put two on it and you can see it gets a little bit funny if i start going too far but just to try and blend it in more uh, still got a bit of white in that but you can play with all these effects settings in here and that way you can try and get the desired look that you want hope you got something out of that today Hopefully the one 2.2 vase will be coming out soon. Looks like the fun control camera's already been released, so I'll have a go at that later on and see what I can do with that. I'll have another video soon on how to place objects um, using Flux Context, uh, so that should be quite good. Look forward to that. Meanwhile, subscribe, like, 